So if you remember from common emitter amplifiers, uh, after we were done with biasing and we wanted to actually connect the signal source, we had to use the decoupling capacitors. So just to remind you, we had uh, this transistor, let's say collector was some RC to VCC, and this was V out. And let's say emitter was it had some RE. It couldn't, it could have not had it, right? So it's not like basically if it had it, it was emitter, common emitter with degeneration. If it didn't have it, well, just simple common emitter. And then to bias it, we said that we put these like R1 and R2, one to ground, the other one to VCC. And then to connect to some signal source, we said that we cannot just do it directly. Why? Because let's say the signal source, this is Vn. Let's say it's like one millivolt times sine of, um, I don't know, 50 T. So it's a 50 Hertz sinusoidal. So like versus time, it looks like this. So 50 Hertz sinusoidal with a magnitude of one millivolt, right? That's definitely uh, is going to turn off my transistor because I'm connecting that it's going to basically cancel out the effect of the biasing circuit because it's forcing the voltage at the base to be one millivolt up and down, right? It's it's going to be around zero volts. It's not going to have any kind of like a, a large DC voltage to bias the transistor to like, I don't know, 0.7 volts or 0.8 volts or whatever that we like it to be, right? So if I have, if I had this connection, nothing would have worked. The transistor would have been off, right? So to avoid this can this, this problem, what we did was that we added this capacitor and we called it the C uh, coupling, right? And we said that it's always a big capacitor because we want to make sure that at any uh, decent frequency, at any practical frequency, it is it could be uh, considered as a short circuit. So C big. For AC analysis, we want it to be short, to be considered as short. And for DC analysis, we want it to, to be open, right? Why big? Because, well, one over the resistance or the impedance of this capacitor is one over J omega C. So if C is big enough, at any omega, at any frequency, this one over J omega C is a small number, except for omega zero, which is DC, which, well, the, the resistance becomes infinity, therefore it becomes an open circuit. So using this trick, I can make sure that when I'm doing AC analysis, um, I have my signal at the base, and there's no problem. When I'm doing DC analysis, my signal, this this capacitor, is really uh, isolating my signal source from my circuit, and then the bias uh, resistors are actually going to set the voltage, the DC voltage, at the base. Okay. Now, I gave this introduction simply because I wanted to remind you about like this capacitor, and then let's talk about. Uh, well, how to connect the, the, the signal source to a common base amplifier because well we have talked about everything about common base let's see how to connect signal to it right uh, one way to do this is that well one 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 person one engineer might actually think that well i'm going to use the the coupling capacitor again so this is your v in just not just to make sure that we are not really messing with the biasing i'm just going to put this decoupling capacitor i'm going to call it c1 and then connect it to the base. And then, well, this VB at the base is going to take care of stuff, right? It's going to take care of uh, the biasing and everything. And then this VB could be replaced very much by, like this, this could be replaced with uh, resistive dividers, stuff that we talked before, right? We talked about them over there, right? So this could have been just a resistive divider. I'm just saying that, well, we have taken care of the biasing. The signal comes through this decoupling capacitor, so it's not going to mess up the biasing. Everything looks good, right? I want you guys to think about it and uh, try to figure out. It's it's very simple. That there's something wrong with the circuit and with the way that uh, we are we're connecting the signal source to it because it's never going to work. Like this circuit is just awful. Like it's not that like its performance is going to be weak it's just not gonna work absolutely like it's turned off right it's turned off and it's not gonna work at all so that's the first question i have from you they want you to think about it uh, the answer to that question and i'm hoping that you have thought about it is that if you imagine this circuit in the dc mode so just for the dc 
the circuit is going to look like this so i'm going to have the resistor i'm going to have the transistor this is my vp and then i have an open circuit here right because the capacitor is replaced by an open circuit and then well i don't care what is happening after that right because this means that the i emitter is going to be zero therefore well all other currents are going to be zero i collector is going to be all of them are related to, uh, to each other by by beta or like beta plus one or something right so you can imagine that well this transistor is off therefore there's no current therefore there's no when there's no current there's no gm there's no transconductance there's no amplifier nothing right so this is why it doesn't work now now the next question i have from you that i want you guys to think about it is that uh we might try to actually quickly fix this by saying that okay so you want the path to ground i'm going to provide you a path to ground i'm going to connect this to ground this way i have a path to ground and uh well my my capacitor is still there and it's not really uh messing up with the biasing so i should be fine right I should be really like uh, the, the capacitor is decoupled similar to what we had in the common emitter uh, so it's not going to be messed with the biasing and now you have a path to ground for the emitter so even if the, even when the capacitor is actually open circuit your transistor is going to be on and you're going to be working right now the question uh, the second question i have from you is that well what is the problem with this one again this is not going to work again for a different reason um I hope that uh, you have thought about it. So the reason that this is not going to work is that we are just we just connected this shorted this emitter to ground, right? So even in the like when we are doing the AC analysis, even though the capacitor is actually short circuit, um, this node is ground. So no matter what is my signal. It's not going to be affecting my emitter. Emitter is forced to ground, so it's not going to be changing. Therefore, well, nothing else in the circuit is going to be changing. There is no small signal coming into my circuit simply because I kind of kill it in the beginning, right? So my, my small signal model is going to be for the second circuit. It's going to look like this. I'm going to have this V in. To ground. And then on the emitter side, so this, this V in is shorted to ground. And then my emitter and base are having that R pi and my current source. And then the RC, this is V out to ground and base is to ground as well. And then emitter is to ground as well. So I'm kind of like not really bringing anything to the circuit or like you could have said, well, why did you disconnect them? Let's connect them. Yeah, I can connect them. But at the end of the day, this is ground, right? So you can see that there is no voltage across R pi because I'm forcing this node to be ground. That node is also ground. So V pi is going to be zero. So GM V pi is going to be zero. Therefore, well, V out is going to be zero, right? So we fixed something at least our transistor is on like from the dc point of view with this with this uh with this fix that we proposed from the dc point of view the transistor is on and it's biased and nice and everything but the signal cannot even come into this trend to this to this circuit simply because we have forced the signal to go down the drain basically go down to ground like the signal comes in and then goes all the way to ground there's no path for it to go to anywhere else simply because it's shorted to ground, right? So this fix didn't work. So let's actually think about what else we can do to actually make this work. And that's what I'm going to talk about in the next slide. So the way that we do the signal connection looks like this. The way that we do it is that we have this capacitor. Ignore this RS for now. This could exist or not, right? That doesn't like this. That's a source resistance. It could be there or not, right? That doesn't really matter. We have the couple the coupling capacitor and then here instead of connecting it directly to ground i've connected it through some resistor to ground okay now this means that when i'm doing dc analysis i don't see anything on this side right so none of this exists because i have that capacitor so well i have a proper circuit there's a path to ground and this re is there so like i just have to choose the re value and vb value in a way that I bias the transistor properly. 
Okay, good. Now, when I'm doing AC analysis, this capacitor is short circuit, but then because I have this RE here, this node, the emitter, is not ground anymore, right? But then I do make an observation that I know that if the signal is coming in from here, I want all of the signal to go up, right? Because it has two paths. It could go down or go up. Going up means that, well, it's going to be multiplied by that GMRC gain that I know, and then well, I'm, it's going to appear somehow like some fraction of it or some mul like some uh, multiplication of it is going to appear at the VL. So I like the signal to go up, the majority of the signal to go up, and I like the signal that, and I know that the signal that goes down, it literally goes down the drain. It goes to resistor and then to ground. So I'd like the minimum, like the, the share of the signal that goes down to be minimal, right? How do I make sure of that? I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure of that using my knowledge of current division from electric cross circuits. I know that if, if there is a current coming into a branch, and it has to be divided into two sections, the majority of it is going to the section that has much less resistance. So if R1 is here and R2 is here, if R1, if I choose R1 to be much smaller than R2, therefore I can guarantee that I1 is going to be much greater than I2, or I can guarantee that I1 is almost equal to I, I being here, I1 being here, and I2 being there. Okay? I'm going to use the same idea. So with this circuit, the first thing I notice is that, again, I define the emitter, the node at the emitter as X, right? So I'm going to call here X. And I know that from before, I know that uh, V out over VX is GMRC. Right? So if this signal was directly applied to the emitter of my transistor and it was dealing with a circuit that looked like this, so like the same VCC, RC, and then I have the base connected to some DC voltage, VB. Um, sorry, this is DC, so it has to be capital V, B. And then I had here, if I had V in or Vx here, I know that if this is my V out, V out over Vx would be GMRC. Okay, so my job is to just find Vx over Vn, right? Similar to what we have been doing up to now, right? So what would be Vx over Vn? It would be, well, let's draw the circuit. I have some Vn, I have Rs. I'm talking about small signal circuit, right? Capacitor is short circuit. I have this RE. And I have this resistance looking up. What do I have looking up? I have 1 over GM of the Q1. And then there's no resistance in the base. So it's going to be that, that 1 over GM then. So it's going to be just 1 over GM to ground. Okay. And here is my VX. So what would be VX over VN? VX over Vn is going to be 1 over Gm in parallel with Re over 1 over Gm in parallel with Re plus Rs. Okay? Therefore, so from number 1 here, number 2 here, I can say that 1 and 2 result in V out over V in to be equal to 1 over GM parallel with RE over 1 over GM parallel with RE plus RS times GM RC. Okay, so that's going to be the gain of my amplifier. And I didn't really need to write any KVLs or KCLs or anything, right? I just basically reduced the circuit to a circuit that I know, which was this guy. And then uh, after that, I just basically found the resistive divider. Uh, the only thing that I learned from here is that if I want this to be a proper like gain, like if I want this this to give me a good gain, uh, if, if I want this circuit to actually have a proper gain, uh, I need to make sure that RE is much greater than whatever I see from 
looking from node X looking up, which is one over GM. So looking up, I know that I have one over GM. Looking down, let me erase this stuff. Looking down, I know that I have RE. So by the way, this RN that is defined here is going to be just basically one over GM in parallel with RE. Okay, because though both of them are from node X to ground. Now I know that I RE has to be much greater than one over GM to get a good gain. Otherwise, all of my signal is going to go down the drain. None of it is going to go up, right? Even mathematically, I can see it from here, right? So if in like basically ideally, at least from the gain point of view, if RE is infinity, one over GM in parallel with RE is going to be just one over GM. Right? If RE is anything less than infinity, any finite value, the combination of this 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 parallel combination is going to be something less than one over GM. Right? We know this from the 2200 from electrical circuits that, like, if you have R1 in parallel, like, if you have, let me actually give you some numerical examples, like one ohms, uh, one ohm in parallel with 100 ohm, or with let's let's start with a small number with one ohm. It's going to give you 0.5. 1 with 10 is going to give you 10 over 11. 1 with 100 is going to give you 100 over 101, right? 1 with infinity is going to give you almost 1, right? So you can see that it's always less than 1, and it, at best case scenario, it's going to be just 1, right? So if you have a 1 over GM in parallel with RE, best case scenario, RE is actually infinity. Well, it's not... By the way, it's best case scenario only for gain. We don't want this RE to be infinity because it's going to mess up our biasing, right? So it has to be a large value so that when, when I have 1 over GM in parallel with that, I get pretty much 1 over GM. And from these examples that I have here, you can see that as long as it's 10 times bigger than uh, the, the 1 over GM or as uh, bigger than the resistor that we care about, which is in this case is 1 ohm, then the, the result is almost 1 ohm, like 10 over 11 is pretty much okay, right? Yeah, 0.5 is really, really small, right? 1 in parallel with 2 is going to be 2 over 3, still pretty small, right? But 1 in parallel with 10, 10 over 11 is almost 1, right? So you could uh, close your eyes on that. So here's the same thing. So if I want this to work uh, for a decent... Sorry. For a descent gain, we need RE to be much bigger than 1 over GM. And for example, 10 times bigger. Okay. So as long as RE is 10 times bigger than 1 over GM, we should get a proper gain out of this circuit. 